So at Houston Audubon, we believe that every green space counts when supporting birds and other wildlife. And Lauren, I know that you share that value system. And I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the big picture of what you're trying to accomplish. Thanks for letting me talk about this, Sarah. Yeah, I totally share that view. My, you know, I came into this because of pollinators. You know, a pollinator is any creature. It could be a bat, it could be a bird, like a hummingbird, and primarily invertebrates, right, insects and things like that, that carries the pollen from the male to the female part of the flower. So pollinators are my thing, and in particular, invertebrates, insects. That was my passion, right? That's what drew me into this. And, and pollinators are in trouble, you know, with climate changing, just becoming a little more unstable with more habitat being taken up for human habitation or crop growth and whatever. The increased use of pesticides and herbicides, and by the way, home gardens are some of the worst offenders of the use of pesticides and herbicides. It is becoming harder and harder for pollinators, particularly invertebrates, to find places to raise their young, so leaves that they can feed on and so forth, and also places for the adults to feed nectar and then pollen for the, um, the juvenile, for the uh, uh, larvae. So they need our help. I have really clicked with that school of thought, like Professor Doug Talman, for example, that says that it doesn't matter the size of your green space in an urban setting, it matters that you have it. And if you support one part of the web of life. For me, it was my focus was on pollinators. For, for others, it might be birds, like for Professor Talman. You're supporting the entire web of life. It's all interconnected. So, the number of people who have these green spaces in urban areas where habitat is scarce for birds, reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates, the better. And in fact, I would even go so far as to say it's number and not size. Because pollinators, particularly invertebrates, need a pathway. Some places call it a pollinator pathway. I think London has a program for this. Maybe Stockholm, I think. Some cities in the Pacific Northwest. They call it different things. Bee highways, pollinator pathways. The idea is to get businesses and homeowners in urban areas to have at least some patch of native green area. If you plant the plants that the caterpillars feed on, the larvae feed on, and um, that produce pollen and nectar for insects, they will thrive, the plants will thrive, and then birds will have something to feed their young because most songbirds, I think this is right, right? Their juveniles don't eat seeds, they don't eat berries, they eat insects. So without the insects, we don't have birds. Without the insects, we don't have uh, lizards like the green and brown anoles here. We have nothing to feed the toads or frogs. I, it doesn't matter what your focus is. It can be birds, it can be insects, it can be lizards, doesn't matter. Gardening for them is the same way. And as long as you have a patch, you build it, they'll come. And that's what I'm discovering. And here it, we, we adopted the name St. Julian's Crossing. I can tell you about that in a second too, but we adopted the name St. Julian's Crossing for our wildscape here at our home gardens. To date, I have recorded 39 species of butterfly, close to 30 species of bee, all native except for honeybee, and probably well over 25 to 30, close to 30 species of wasp in this little area, just here. Can you imagine? If this biodiversity can happen here, can you imagine what it would be like if everyone had a little patch? I mean, even just in an apartment, a few potted plants. You pick native plants that those species have co-evolved with, they'll come. And then birds will feed on them, and lizards will feed on them, and, and, and uh, other reptiles will feed on them. It's so cool, right? So you can be part of bringing back nature to the urban setting. And I think we are at the forefront of this fight. You and I and others who are working in businesses in urban areas and homes, the habitat's not coming back. We're not getting the native prairie back. We've already dug it up. So we just need to reintroduce the plants that they need to survive, and, and they'll do okay.